have a busy application where records are frequently being updated, there's a good chance that a user might unintentionally override uh, someone else's changes. Let me show you here in this example. Let's say I find out I need to change the price of this product, so I go in and edit it. And meanwhile, while I'm looking up the new price for this product, another user comes along and updates the uh, same product and changes something else. Uh, let's say he changes the name of the product just as an example. So that name changed successfully, but once this other user finishes the form and updates the price, then it overrides the name so it's back to the original. A common solution to this problem is optimistic locking, so let's add that here. The first thing I'm going to do is generate a new migration because I need to add a column called lock version to the products table. And that name is important, lock version, because Active Record is going to pick that up and automatically use it for optimistic locking. So this should be of an integer type, and the way this works is it will start at zero and automatically increment every time the product is updated. And if the current version doesn't match with the database, then it's going to refuse the update. Now it's important that the column default to zero, so I'll make that change in this migration before I run it, and I'll also have it so it's not null. And then I'll run the migrations to add that column. The next thing I'm going to do is go into the form view for this product and add in a hidden field for passing that log version through. So this way it persists so we know what version the product is being updated as. And I also need to update the product model itself so that I can pass that log version in through mass assignment. So now when I go to edit a product, it will now include a hidden field, and you notice that value defaults to zero. So let's say I'm going to make a change here. I'll update the price in this one. And meanwhile, while I'm on that form, another user comes along and edits the product. And let's say they change the name. And then when I update this, I'll get this exception saying stale object error because that object has changed. So the log version was incremented to one, which doesn't match the uh, log version passed in through this form. Now leaving this exception doesn't really provide a nice user experience. Instead, we should rescue from this and give the user a chance to fix the problem. One option is to handle this in the controller's update action. We could just rescue from that exception here and then render out some kind of special conflict resolution view that displays both versions of the record and allows the user to fix it with a form. However, this means we would need to make that view and abstracting that out if we want to do the same thing for other resources is kind of difficult. So I won't be doing this here. Instead, I want to handle this through validations, so that way the errors will automatically be displayed when the edit form is rendered again here. So I'm going to do this through a custom method on the product model. Let's call it update with conflict validation. So now going to the product model, I can define that method update with a conflict validation, and this takes some arguments, which I'm just going to pass straight into update attributes, because I want it to basically behave the same way, except rescue from that exception. And when this happens, I want to add an error to the validations, and I'll just add it to a base. Let's say uh, this record changed while you were editing, and you might want to customize this error message to make it a little more user-friendly. And I'll return false so the update fails. So now when I reload this page to resubmit the form, I get that validation error instead of the exception. However, it doesn't tell me exactly what, uh, basically what attributes changed and what they were. We can easily add this using dirty tracking, which I covered in episode 109. We can call changes on a model, which will return a hash of the changed attribute. So we can loop through this, and we get access to the name of the attribute and the values, both the original and the uh, new one. So we can just add an error for each attribute. So for that given attribute, let's uh, add a little error that says it was the values, the first value basically, because that was the one that is currently in the database. So now when I reload this page, uh, the user can see exactly what attributes are different from those in the database. And they can see that the name was changed to Settlers of Catan 2 while they were editing this form, so they can make that change here to reflect that. Now the other attributes that are listed here, I would prefer they don't show up. Uh, the lock version and updated ad are easy enough to hide. However, the price, this is something that the user is changing through this form intentionally, and it shows up because it differs from the database. And currently, there's no way to know that this attribute is what the user is changing just because we don't persist enough information about the older version. Uh, we could make that change, but it's pretty difficult and not something I'll be covering here. Another issue is that because the log version stays the same, submitting the form again will not allow us to continue past even after we resolve the conflict. So to fix these issues, I'm going to set the uh, log version to what the log version was. So this will make it current with what's in the database. And by the way, this method is also provided by the dirty tracking. 
And uh, this will allow the user to continue on because we're going to assume that the user is going to resolve any conflicts on that form. And then uh, we also need to hide the updated at attribute in the list of changes. So I'll say accept here and say updated at attribute will not show up in the errors. So now when the user runs into a conflict, it only shows them errors that pertain to what's in the form and they can just resolve any conflicts and then update the product and it will allow them to continue on. So now the solution is pretty much complete, but I do have a couple of issues with this. One is that we're adding validations sort of outside of the active record validation step, which uh, might work okay, but there might be some strange side effects in different situations. Another issue is what if there are other columns that are frequently updated outside of the ones on this form? That will trigger a lock version when those are updated, which will trigger the conflict. However, there likely isn't really a conflict with those attributes that the user is editing. Now there's not really a good way to exclude certain attributes from incrementing the log version counter, nor really should there be because that's not the way optimistic locking is intended to behave. So this got me thinking, what we're trying to do here is really pushing the boundaries of what optimistic locking is designed for. So what I've done is come up with an alternative solution that doesn't use optimistic locking. Let me show you it briefly here. Now I've rolled back the changes we made to this application so we can start fresh. Now I only need to change two files. I'm not even going to add a migration. Uh, the first change is inside of the form. I need to add a hidden field like I did before. And this field is going to be called original updated at because this is going to contain the app updated at time of the record when this form is displayed. Now all other changes are going to be in the product model and to save us a bit of time, I'm just going to paste this in because there is a, quite a bit of code here. So what I did here is added this original updated at so it can be set through mass assignment. So this is a virtual attribute with a getter method and a setter. And the getter notice it defaults to the currently updated at time converted to a float. So that way it's more precise in the form. And then I have a validation called handle conflict, which only happens when the record's updated. So here's that handle conflict validation. And this will check if the updated at attribute, which now exists in the database is greater than the original one that we submitted through the form. And if it is, it's going to assume that there's a conflict and display any of the changed attributes through validation errors like we had before. So this pretty much functions the same way as before. If two updates are made at the same time, then it's just going to display the validation error and tell us what fields are the potential conflicts. So what I like about this solution is the validations are in the right place, and it doesn't even require that we add another column to the database. It uses updated at, However, if we wanted to use something else, maybe to get more precise and only add conflicts on certain attributes in a form, we could add another time-based column to the database and use that instead here. Now I've tried to keep everything I've shown you here generic, so it works with multiple models. This way you can easily abstract this functionality out and just include it in each of the models you want to handle conflicts in. Well, that's all I have for you today on this topic. Thanks for watching.